What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another video. Uh, for those of you who do not know, my name is Jack. That's Cowboy taking a dump over there. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about if a healer or an Australian cattle dog, same thing, is right for you. So let's just dive right in. Well, I am by no means claiming to be an expert with this breed. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who, are, who, you know, breeders and whatnot who probably know more and can say a lot more about the breed. But I will say, um, you know, I think after owning one for two and a half years, um, getting past arguably that toughest point of owning a dog from like nine months to a year and then raising him to be a pretty good dog thus far, uh, I have some credibility I guess to talk about this guy um, and again you know take what I'm saying with a with a grain of salt because um, you know all dogs are different individual dogs and whatnot but I will say that he seems to fit a lot of the standards stereotypes and stuff that people talk about with the breed um, he is a full catalog 100% so I think uh, we got some good stuff to talk about but just wanted to put that out there Okay, we're gonna start with the pretty obvious one. Um, exercise requirements, as you can see right now, uh, it's pretty intense. Um, you know, it's a lot of exercise. This isn't really a dog that, you know, you're just gonna kind of walk around the block a couple times and he'll be good. Um, you know, it's if you take him for a walk in the morning before work or something and you leave, he's gonna be recharged by like 9.30. Um, so it's not a dog that's just gonna you know be content with a couple walks a day um, they're pretty constant I will say as he's gotten older um, you know his his patience and his ability to kind of adapt to my schedule has gotten better for sure um, not as demanding as he used to be but I mean look, he's still barking at me to go back and throw the ball so he's very demanding um, physical requirements uh, so that's just if you want a dog that can has recharge that quick, um, they're great for it. They go all day, little energizer bunnies. But if you don't, something to think about because when that dog is capable of that much exercise, that's great. But what about on the days when you aren't able to do that? They still need that exercise, if that makes sense. If you get what I'm trying to say. Like, if you wanna be able to take a dog for a bike ride, that's great, they can do it. But then if you only do that once a week, what about the other six days? Um, so, something to think about there. Heel. Good boy. Okay. Okay, another one that's pretty obvious and talked about a lot is mental stimulation. Uh, it's the smartest dog I've ever had. Um, you know, you can just tell, like, my parents just got a Frenchie puppy. Nothing against Frenchies, but when you look into the Frenchie's eyes, there's probably, there's not a lot going on, okay? Uh, he's just kind of, you know, there and existing and he's cute and fun to look at. But I mean, when you look into this dog's eyes, you, you see the focus and like the, the reading into your soul, okay? Like it's, it's on another level. Um, their intelligence is just insane, which I think is really cool. Um, but you know, sometimes like too smart for their own good. Uh, and some people don't want that. I uh, like, you gotta be honest with yourself. Like it sounds cool. Oh, my dog's so smart, but there's a lot more mental stimulation needs that come with that. And so it's just something to think about. Um, and I think, you know, now I've gotten a lot of comments about saying like, people saying, oh, my healer's so great with kids. Cause in the past, you know, I've kind of been like, Mm, they're they're not the best with kids um, guys there's obviously outliers and I don't have kids I didn't raise him around kids I tried to socialize him with little kids as much as I could by taking him out places but um, you know he's tolerant of them but uh, it's when I say healers aren't great with kids what I mean is they're not my first choice for a babysitter or like a nanny dog or anything like that. Um, if you want something like that, I would look more like at Labs, Goldens, uh, Frenchies, Newfoundlands, Great Pyrenees, like breeds that are just kind of known for either being motherly to like livestock or sporting breeds that are pretty docile with soft temperaments. Like this is a herding breed guys. Like 
he was bred to bite and bully cows like 1200 pound cows okay you you got to have some some fire in you to do that and uh and i guess you know my point being is he's not super tolerant of like people crawling on him. like he won't he, he'll get up and move or like he's not really so snippy anymore because i used to get on him pretty bad about that but the, like i guess you know point just being is they're not super tolerant of a lot of things that other breeds would be more tolerant of um they're a very stoic breed like i i consider them like they act a lot like a human would like don't but would you walk up and pet another human they're like why would you do that i'm i'm an intelligent creature whereas a lab is like <laughs> pet me uh do you have little kids in your life are you gonna have them soon um you know i know a lot of people in the comments are like oh my healer was great with my kid that's great um you know i'm just saying in general like it's not my first pick for a dog with kids probably if that's what you're looking for a good example being you know the other day my girlfriend and i she has a Brittany, and uh we were out front of this like frozen yogurt ice cream shop or whatever and this little kids um came up and like hey we pet your dogs and we we're like yeah sure like cowboy's fine with it but um you know like the little grubby kid like tried to come pet cowboy and he kind of like moved away a little bit whereas the Brittany is you know like all lovey-dovey and wants scratches and leaning into him so um that's just my experience that's how he is that's how i've heard a lot of other ones are as well um so kids something to consider for sure i'm not saying they can't be good with kids especially if they're raised with them it's just going to increase your chances of that working out well right but um just something to think about Another one, I've talked about it before, but just to kind of go over it again, is socialization. Um, if you don't want a dog that you have to socialize super heavily, and you know, they're gonna be kind of more calm, um, more welcoming of other people, that's probably not a cattle dog, right? Uh, you know, they're pretty protective. Um, they don't like things that shouldn't be there, new things in the yard. When a dog's a puppy, you know, they learn all the things that should and shouldn't be in the yard, all the people. Um, and, you know, that's why it's really important to get them out and expose them to as many different things as possible so that when someone comes over, like a pool guy or, or a friend or whatever, they're not gonna freaking bite them. So, uh, and they, they will bite. Um, you know, I think they're more inclined to bite than <laughs> a lot of other breeds people are more scared of, like Rottweilers and Dobies and stuff. like. I mean, these guys were bred to bite, so uh, I think they'll do it. But socialization's huge. You're gonna have to do a lot of it with this breed. Um, you know, Cowboy was socialized a lot, so he's pretty friendly with people for the most part that he knows. Something important to me also when picking a dog breed is like, I, I want the dog to, to look good, you know? Like I like, wanna like the way the dog looks. Um, and I think cattle dogs are pretty pretty badass little dogs i mean especially when they they're stocky like cowboy come on come on let's go and uh they got like that thicker structure to them like i really like that i like thick-headed dogs uh you know i think their size too is also something that was a pro for me you know he's like 48 pounds but he's super easy to travel with like we just went on a road trip he just hops in the back of the truck extremely athletic um, you know, just hops into the truck, hops over whatever I need him to, you know, there's no picking him up to, to get him in the car, right? He can jump over pretty much anything. Um, super agile, super athletic, amazing endurance. Just great for out on the trail, adventures and stuff. I mean, look at him, he just like flies through the air like a lemur. Like we just went on a mountain. Uh, we just hiked a mountain the other morning and he was climbing up boulders like a little billy goat and uh, just, just super athletic, so I like that. I like the way he looks. Um, again, personal preference, right? Now, an interesting one that I've heard some back and forth with is how vocal they are. Uh, he is so vocal. Um, you know, I've heard people say that they're not a super vocal breed, but I disagree with that in my experience. Like. I mean, he barks all the time. And I'm used to big dogs, like Rottweilers, Labs, 
full mass and whatnot. And uh, man, it is a high pitched bark. Like the tone of his bark is something that is sometimes kind of tough. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and he does it a lot. He barks a lot and it's, you know, just, and he's just very vocal in the car and stuff too. Like he sounds like a husky sometimes. I'm like, I didn't get a husky cause I know how vocal they are. But you know, I've heard mixed things about that. Um, but just, just kind of a heads up with my experience there. If you want a dog that is super smart and pretty easy to train, uh, you know, these guys are great. Like I trained him a new trick the other day and he got it on like the third try. So um, extremely intelligent, super just keen on like patterns and stuff. Um, just really, really smart little brains in there. And uh, so really fun to train, fun dogs to train if you know what you're doing for sure. They are one person dogs. I will say that, um, you know, he listens to me, he likes me, I'm the chosen one and everyone else is just kind of there. Uh, so if you are looking for a dog that's gonna share the love around the whole house, probably not it. Uh, you know, they're very one person dogs. If you are looking for a dog that's like fully devoted to you by your side 24 seven, um, they're great for that. I like the fact that he's very, they're very keen on like watching you when you're their one person, right? And they're attached to their owners so strongly and they bond so strongly that, you know, they're, they're pretty, they're the most loyal dog I've ever had. Um, you know, you're not gonna really bribe him with anything. So he's extremely loyal, uh, very owner orientated. So like versus say my, my girlfriend's Brittany, right? Like that dog loves her, but he's very bird orientated. So if there's a bird or her, like he's gonna like, he wants to go find birds. That's what he was bred to do. Whereas, you know, hey, whereas Cowboy, um, he just tried to roll in something gross. Uh, whereas Cowboy, you know, he's very, working with a human partner orientated. So just always checking in with, with me. Um, when we're on walks and stuff, he stays pretty close, which is a great feature because it's just kind of a natural breed, right? When a breed is more protective uh, and extremely loyal, they tend to just stay closer to you. They want to keep an eye on you, make sure everything's good. Um, so they're definitely loyal and protective. These guys are as far as like their their relationship with other dogs go, um, Cowboy plays great with other dogs. Uh, you know, I socialized him a lot though. So I know that some can be a little reactive, a little just kind of bullies, they're brutes, right? Uh, you know, he's socialized well, but he's still a bit of a brute sometimes. So um, it's really important to socialize them early but they can be great with other dogs, right? I think that's more so how you raise them more than the breed necessarily. But, uh, you know, they have the potential to, to knock it along with other dogs for sure, just because, you know, they are bullies. Um, I mean, they're bred to be bullies, right? They're bred to bully cows. So that's something to, to think about a little bit. But I mean, if you, if you know how to socialize a dog and raise them right, I really don't think there should be any issues there. They're really street smart with other dogs, I've found. Um, you know, that, like he doesn't want to go around picking fights because, but you know, he'd, he'd stand up for himself if he had to. So guys, to sum up, um, you know, they're extremely loyal dogs, super athletic. I think just an awesome size. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a big dog and a little body basically, which is a medium sized body, right? Um, so I think their size is definitely a benefit. Um, they do shed a lot. Uh, but I mean, you know, not more than most other breeds out there. Um, super protective, super athletic, endurance is insane, really smart and fun to train if that's what you want. But um, you know, you have to just be honest with yourself and be like, hey, is this, is this, do I really want a dog that isn't just able to be trained to a high level, but needs to be trained to a high level? Um, you know, there's a not a lot of gray area with this breed, I found. Um, you know, you're either in or you're out, so uh, what else? You know, can be good with kids, not my first choice. Um, you know, that's it's just kind of my experience. Um, what else? Just a great, great looking dog, I think. Uh, just that chunky head. I mean, him particularly, obviously I'm biased, but uh, 
you know, good looking little farm dog. So, um, you know, I'm biased to breeds that have that kind of farm dog history at least. Uh, socialization, absolute must. Um, you know, I, I will say something that's it's a little interesting to me when I'm, I'm not really used to like the shepherdy breeds. And I think it's pretty common between like Malinois even, German Shepherds, these guys, um, you know, they tend to be a little bit more, I don't want to like say like flightish or like just not as like rock solid sometimes when it comes to uh, like loud noises or like blowers or weird stuff like that because they're so like kind of fight or flight sometimes that um, versus like a lab who doesn't really get, give a crap about that type of stuff or even like a Rottweiler who's just kind of more quieter about it like they tend to be a little like iffy with some of that stuff like he's kind of scared of blowers um, whereas like our labs have never been even like blinked an eye at that type of stuff um, so that's that was kind of interesting that I've found and I've found it's, it's pretty common um, you know, like they got weird traits, right? Like they like to bite moving tires and stuff and bite moving vehicles, which I trained out of them pretty early, but like that happens all the time. So um, there's just more work. I mean, I would just say that they're, they're more work than a lot of dogs for sure. But I mean, the rewards there, if you're willing to put it in, um, it's just, you have to be honest with yourself, you know, is it, is it something where you really want to put that extra work in with them? Uh, because they are a lot of work. Uh, you know, he's a very demanding dog demanding time wise training wise uh, you have to up your skills as far as the dog trainer at least I did uh, and I thought I was like decent but you know he humbled me <laughs> but um, great little dog great badass dog you know as I've, I've owned the breed now for a while uh, I've come to appreciate them a lot more uh, and I think that's probably why I don't recommend them to people so much just because um, you know I think a lot of people aren't necessarily prepared uh, for what they're getting into um, but the people that do know what they're getting into and you know they they realize like hey this is what I want and they're open to it like and you're open to putting in the work they're, they're awesome dogs and you know a lot of people are like oh it's the only dog breed I'll ever have so well thanks for watching the video guys hopefully that gave you a little bit more insight into the Australian catalog uh, if you like the video, please hit like, subscribe, drop a comment below what y'all are thinking, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Appreciate you.